Nikon D50 Teardown and Review this time. Hi, I'm Mike, independent camera repair technician, and I'm starting fixyourcamera.org to show you the photo gear industry from a different point of view. No specs, no marketing BS, talking about things you won't hear anywhere else. Welcome. It's an older DSLR from 2006, I guess. It's still a pretty good choice if you need a very cheap camera body for some specific projects when you expect that your camera might get damaged, for example. And this one, coupled with a good lens, can give some surprisingly good results. It has a built-in motor so that you can use most Nikon lenses, including the cheap old ones. This particular one is in mint condition. There are only a couple of shots on the shutter count. Good thing about this model is that the outer covers are reasonably thick and good quality. It's almost like a small tank. Not that easy to destroy. Within reason, of course. Unlike all of the entry-level models that came out after this one, like D60, D40, D3000 series. So, as usual, I start with removing all the accessories. They are not necessary here. Then all of the covers. Discharge the flash capacitor. There is about 300 volts on this capacitor. It can hurt or possibly kill you. So please be very careful with any camera that you're going to disassemble. And continuing with the top cover, the soldering wires and whatever is necessary. Next is the DG board. I usually call it a digital board because there is a processor on it, memory chips, SD card. All the digital stuff is happening on this board. The sensor. This one is super easy. There are no washers, no springy adjustment things here. Just screws. Now the top part. Every DSLR when you remove the covers has two major parts. There is rear body or the mainframe and the front body or mirror box. All of the mechanical stuff is going on within the mirror box or the front body. And most mechanical failures are within this part. So, in order to remove it, I have to remove all of this other stuff first. Now the main board. This is the part that controls all the functions within your camera. For example, all or most of the buttons, it's driving the motors. No heavy digital image processing is happening here. It's not the same in every camera. So, for example, sometimes motor drivers are located somewhere else on the bottom on a separate board. Or, as in case of many cheap DSLRs, the main board is integrated together with the digital board. Okay, I got rid of all of this stuff so that now I can remove the mirror box. And it's out. Now, at this point, when everything is disassembled, it's very important to be careful and not to touch some of the things here. For example, on the top, there is a light meter, adjusted at the factory. If you squeeze it with your hands, you might cause some problems here, and it might require adjustments. On the bottom, there is a focusing sensor. If you touch this one or squeeze it, the camera will have focusing problems, very likely, and again require adjustments. Pretty much impossible to do at home without tools. So this is the mirror box. And this is the mainframe that holds all of this stuff together. Let's see what's left here. A flash circuit with the flash capacitor attached to it. The main motor. More expensive cameras usually have at least one more motor to drive the shutter separately. This one is not of a particularly great quality. It does fail from time to time and has to be replaced. It's not a difficult job and can be done without removing the mirror box. It used to cost about 15 bucks, if I remember correctly, back in the day when Nikon used to sell parts. Now you cannot buy it from Nikon anymore, but I just checked and they are still available on eBay, so no problem. And the last part here is the DC-DC board. This is in simple words a power supply. It takes power from the battery and creates many different voltages for the entire system. On the mainframe, right here, you can see several pieces of double-sided sticky tape. It's a very common finding in all the SLRs. Its job is to catch and hold any dust particles that might get into the mirror box. Over time, it's becoming less and less sticky, so it's a good idea to clean it with alcohol while servicing the whole camera. Or replace with new tape. 
There is also a metal insert around the sensor that makes this whole frame more mechanically stable, also a common thing. The rest of it is made of plastic. And one more interesting thing about mainframes is that they are usually not available as separate replacement parts. Good. Next, I'll tell you about electronics within this camera and then we'll take a look at the shutter, mirror box, top and rear covers and some other interesting things.